A lot of anglers that are new to offshore bass fishing will head to their lake and try textbook offshore areas like ledges, humps, or points and not catch any fish, then immediately give up and go back to the bank. This is the number one mistake you can make if you're a new offshore angler. Instead of just going to the obvious structure spots on your lake, you need to stick with it a little bit longer and look for some less obvious structure spots because most of the time when you're fishing on your lake, there are going to be bass biting offshore. In this video, Jimmy's going to explain how he finds some of these less obvious structure spots on a lake that he's very familiar with and how you can maximize them to put a lot of big fish in the boat. Good fish, guys. He was in the middle of that brush pile. Stay down. Oh, that's bigger than I thought. Wow, bigger fish than I thought, guys. I really don't like boat flipping and getting them on the carpet. I, this fish was bigger than I thought. Good fish right here. I'm fishing a brush pile, and you see right here the point behind me, just another rounded point. Like I said, I've, uh, I became a fan of fishing the rounded points. Look at this fish, it has a bloody tail. I mean, it's thick, I don't, you know, that's kind of odd. But, uh. Just fishing a brush pile for a rounded point. Like I said, I'm just out here today doing the old, uh, fishing the old summer structures right now. Like I said, I've caught two fish. I've lost good one good one. Let's see if we can keep this up. Hey guys, today for this Catch 15 Challenge, we're down at Derrick's Lake in southwest Arkansas. Today for this challenge, I'm going to go ahead and block off an area of the lake, and we're going to be in the south portion of the lake. I'm doing this because... I'm going to try to focus on this area as I'm not just going to go run spots and fish history. Now, I do know the south end of the lake well, and I really want to catch some fish deep offshore today. For this challenge, um, 15 pounds is very doable at this lake, as this past weekend it took 18 pounds in the night tournament to win. We're going to break down later in the video what's really happening at this rounded point. Now, as you see from the drone shot, I'm right on top of the point, and then to the side of it where it drops off is the brush pile. Now, after I caught this fish, I got closer up to the brush pile with my Garmin live scope for y'all to see a good picture of the brush pile. Now, I also noticed that there was bait around the brush pile, and I knew that this brush pile had a chance later in the day to be productive. After leaving this spot, I did go out and check some areas on the main lake. I checked the main lake humps, I checked the main lake points, I checked uh, ledges, and just spots that I've caught fish at before that are normally just summer holes. Then, after not catching anything but just small spotted bass, and I didn't really see much action out there on these spots, I then decided I need to find some stuff similar in the middle of the creeks like this one. So I went to one creek and I idled around it for a good, for about 45 minutes to an hour, and tried to find a new brush pile that somebody might, might have planted. After I did not find one, I went back to the creek that I caught this one in, fished a couple brush piles, did not do any good or saw anything like I saw on this previous spot. So then after all that, I decided to go back to the brush pile. And as you're about to watch, it went down. Right place, right time. Stay tuned. Good fish. This fish is fighting. Good fish. Get in here. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. It has been a grind. Y'all talk about this like I said, I have been, it has been a grind of an afternoon. I've gone a couple hours without a bite. I've caught, I mean, without good bites. I've caught some small ones, some spotted bass. And um, like I said, it's hot. There's barely wind right here, but out there behind me, there is no wind. And so I've just been fishing real slow. I'm trying to, <laughs> like I said, I've only caught three largemouth on the day. And the three largemouth I've caught are good ones. Now, as we look at this spot, as you see, I outlined the rounded point there and it's anywhere from like 8 to 12 feet. It's pretty flat. Now to the side of it is a pretty good sharp drop off. And to that drop off it's anywhere from 14 to 20 feet and it gets even deeper the further you get towards the main creek. 
Now, somebody placed this brush pile there, and it's a nice brush pile, of course, big brush pile. I, um, and as this day would make this spot even more perfect was there was a lot of bait that I saw coming in and out right there. I also saw a dead brim that came up to the surface. So there was just a lot going on here, and it was just a timing deal for me. Now, let's get back to the footage, and we're going to break this spot down more of to, to why I think there was such a big school of bass in this brush pile during this time. Got another one. Stay down. Good fish. Good fish. Got him. Oh, how the tides have turned. How the tides have turned. Look at this fish here. Another thick, healthy fish. Wow, just one of those days, y'all, where I've grinded it out, ground, grinded it out, and I've tried other things, you know, but I kind of earlier got, got stuck to, hey, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna stay to this rounded point pattern. And uh, something I have confidence in, and just something, you know, still kind of early midsummer, even though it is super hot and 90 degree weather. Wow, <laughs> look at that fish there. Look at that fish. These fish are thick. Let's talk about this point in the top of it, man, where, where I'm kind of sitting in the boat right now is, anywhere from 10 to 12 feet um and that brush pile slides off right there about 12 to 15 feet and like i said it's just a big old flat point nothing to it and this is just one of those spots that just gets overlooked by a lot of people whoever playing this brush pile very much understands how this goes as in man sometimes the best looking points are the ones that of course a lot of people are going to fish a lot of people are you know going to go up there and side scan and do the electronic game and these are the spots that get overlooked. Whoever planted this brush pile, like I said, kind of had an idea. And it's probably a crappie brush pile for all I know. Uh, and big as this is, I mean, I'm like I said, I've always seen crappie boats on it. I've, I've only fished this two or three times. And uh, nothing, as y'all have uh, seen and about to see, has, has happened uh, to me out here before in a brush pile like this. It's a pretty neat day for me. Another good fish. He thumped on the way down. Oh my gosh, that might be the biggest one of the day. And, oh no! It just got off. Wow. Oh wow. I just threw, I don't know. Oh wow. That happens. Oh, that happens. Y'all, that right there would have put me over 20 pounds. That fish, wow. Let's see if we can get another one. Oh my goodness. They are loaded up in this brush pile, y'all. I'm telling you, I've not had a day out here on this lake like this where they are in one brush top. Now, I know somebody else has, but not me, okay? I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm a big ledge guy. I like to get out there deep on them rock stretches and those rock patches. Uh, but anyway, it's just one thing to show how you got to fish the moment and, and not just come out here in a predetermined way of, hey, I'm going to go fish like this or I'm going to go fish like that. Um, and just fish history. So today I just came out here, kind of got on this, you know, and it's been a tough day, and gosh, they are in this thing. Wow. Fishing this worm in this brush pile today. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be 80 to 100 feet away from this brush pile. I've, I've gotten close on it a couple times uh, by accident, but I'm throwing it out there, of course. I'm letting it sink to the bottom, and then I can kind of tell when I get up to it. Now this wind just picked up, so that's kind of changing the bite a little bit, I believe. I'm thinking it's helping. But uh, with me facing the wind, I'm just hopping this thing. If now, if I was out there like I, you know, I love fishing ledges and, and drop offs and, and shell beds and that sort of thing, I would have it real close to the bottom. And I still can do that with uh, in this brush pile. But right now, since I'm in the brush pile, I'm straight on. I'm just trying to hop it a little bit. With it being calm, I'm, I think I've had to hop it just to entice these fish to bite now with this wind picking up. It should, it, like I said, it should kind of help and I might not have to hop as much. One thing too about these fish, you know, I mean, once you know, like I said, these fish, it's kind of, all these fish I believe have hit this thing on the fall 
in down in this brush. I think they're in it, you know. Not, not many of my bites have been right away. It's been about halfway to the boat as they're in that brush top. And one thing about this type of fish and how these fish are right now, and I can just tell, they are, uh, I mean, they're hitting that thing and taking it to the thick stuff. So you got to get them out. So having a high speed reel helps. This one right here is a 7 to 1 gear ratio. Old Corrado, uh, probably five, six year old Corrado right here. I know Johnny's a big, uh, the Black Max guy, and I'm gonna, you know, I have a couple, and I'm gonna get me a couple more. I haven't bought a brand new reel, y'all, in a long, long time. I've just, I've got reels here and there, and some of these old, some of these, like I said, are, I'm throwing some reels, y'all, that are 14 years old. So it's very important once you set that hook and you know you got him on, get him out of that brush pile. Because he's gonna try to take you down in there. I mean, do they they know, like I mean, like I said, they're uh they know what they're doing. They're trying to hit the bait, hit the shad and the brim, and go right back to home. So you gotta be able to get them out of home. And it's good to have a faster, faster reel and a good rod. This is the Denali Covert Worm and Jig Rod 7-2 medium heavy. Um Got another one. Come on out. Let's not lose you. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Yes, sir. That's the biggest fish of the day right there, boys and girls. Look at that one. Look at that one. Wow, it's a long skinny fish. What a day, it just ate that worm. Wow. I wish I had the steer camera on. It's too hot and it's, it's it kind of got hot, y'all. <laughs> Look at that there. Let me go ahead and weigh them. Wow. Five, five, one, y'all. Five, five, one, that puts me at 20 pounds and six ounces. Look at that, five, five, one. Beautiful fish right there. Let's kind of talk about why I think these fish are here right now. This is not just a brush pile, y'all, that they're going to be here year round. I really think these fish are on their way out to the main lake. There's, you know, points out there, your main river, uh, your main river channel, you got your humps. I think these fish are just on their way to the, uh, to their main lake summer spots. Even though it's 90 degree water right now, 91 is what this thing's showing, and it's hot. I mean, I'm sweating here. Where'd my water go? It's up here. And um, I really just think this is just a group of fish heading out there. You know, I checked out there today. I idled around. I fished. I couldn't find them. And that was part about, you know, Johnny with the channel of Fish the Moment, why I think I became a lot better angler in the past couple of years. Instead of just fishing history, you just go fish. And, you know, if you just always continue to fish history, you're not getting better as an angler. you got to fish the moment, fish the situation, and then you learn from that and grow as an angler. And this is just one of those days. I mean, y'all, I've never caught 20 pounds out here in one brush pile. I fished this lake for going on, I think four to five, I've been here for four years, going on five years, I've never caught 20 pounds in one brush pile like we have. Now I'm gonna explain why I was sitting on top of the point and throwing my worm out in the deep water and bringing it towards the brush pile. The reason I was on the top of the point was that there was no bait on the point. I saw a lot of the bait suspended around the brush pile and even suspended out there in the deeper water. It just made it easier for me to sit on top of that point, make the long cast, let it sink in the deeper water, and then bring it up to the brush pile. So I was out there on the water. I checked the deep dive app to compare it to how I was actually catching these fish. And the first bait it recommended was the Texas rig worm. I'm thinking it's recommending that because of the hot water conditions and the hot summer conditions that we had, but also that there was no wind. It had a variety of offshore lures that it recommended, and I know I had actually four of those on the deck. Just the Texas Rig Worm happened to be the, the bait of choice that worked for the day. Be sure to check out the Deep Dive app, as it will help you give you an idea and help you go, go out on your lake and catch fish. If you can't fish but one time a week or even one time every two weeks, you can use this tool to give you a head start into finding spots and ideas and just what to go look for into helping you go catch fish. I know it's tough for a lot of people that, that can just go fish one or two, one or two times every month or once every week. You're kind of already behind. 
So you can use this app to give you a head start. Go check it out, the Deep Dive app. Hey guys, thank y'all for watching my fishing day today. We did succeed the Catch 15 Challenge. Our five best today went for 20 pounds and six ounces, with the biggest one being a 553. Uh, it's one of those crazy days today. I know uh, y'all watched me catch majority of those fish in one brush pile. Uh, but like I told y'all earlier, I've never done that out here on this lake. Been fishing this lake four to five years. And I, you know, I love fishing the ledges out here, the humps, the big, the big channel swing points. And today was just one of those days to where I had to go fish the moment instead of fishing history. I started off on a couple of those summer spots. I mean, it's right now, y'all, water's 90 degrees when I left. And we've had a week of hot, hot weather. But uh, them fish just weren't there yet in those main lake holes. And I think that spot we caught them at, that little rounded point with that brush pile, it's just a perfect spot for them to stop at before they go to those summer holes. Out there was just, uh, it's just, like I said, it's in the middle of a creek. Them fish man go down that creek and they, they have their areas they spawn at and they are on their way out. So that brush pile was, you know, for an example, kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, a, a Bucky's, for example, or another one of those big old gas stations, a pilot, you know, just, it's just a stopping spot. And luckily when I pulled up there, there was a bunch of big largemouth. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's just pretty neat that uh, I ran into that today. If I wasn't doing this video for y'all, man, I would have ran up the river. I would have fished more history holes, but instead I, I had to lock down and find a way to catch them fish. And I know for me in the previous years, that's what's made me a better angler. I don't fish history as much as I used to. Now I know me being around these lakes as long as I have now, it's just kind of hard at times not to. But another day, this is, you know, just another day, a perfect example of, hey, just go and fish and try to find a way to catch them. Don't just keep rotating your spots and uh, trying to just, you know, go here, here, and here. Like I said, for me, I've never caught fish like I just did at a brush pile out here. I just don't fish brush piles out here. I know some of y'all are going to watch this video and fish this lake and they're going to laugh at me and be like, man, why don't you fish brush piles? I just uh, decided not to because there's so many crappie fishermen typically out here. They're on the brush tops and I don't want to go out there and get in their way. So I try to find a different way to catch them. Now today, thankfully, it's, you know, 97 degrees and the, the crappie guys, there's not many of y'all out there. And I got to go, uh, got to go actually complete this pattern and catch some fish out of a brush pile. But like I said, there was a reason why those fish were there. So uh, thank y'all for watching. Like I said, if you know, leave me a comment down below what you thought about the day. And uh, let, like, you know, if there's any other ways of fishing or places you'd like me to go fish, you know, I'm down here in Southwest Arkansas. I know what gas being right now, $5 a gallon. It's kind of hard for me to go into Texas and fish them lakes or even Oklahoma, but we will get there eventually. Uh, but it's still fishing. And man, it's a, a joy these days, man. Like I said, it's hot. I caught most of these fish between 1230 and 130. Middle hottest part of the day. So with that, Let's go check out my equipment I was using today to catch these fish. The worm I was using today, um, I used two of them. I start off with the Netbait Sea Mag in the plum color, and then I started getting low on those, and I know as it kind of got hotter and the sun got up, I decided to go to the Plum Apple, and I had that in the Zumo Monster. I was using a 5 watt Gamakatsu hook, using the half ounce uh, tungsten from Denali, uh, half ounce tungsten from Denali as well. Um, so like I said, the plum apple is a good color. I know a lot of people like it when it gets hot. I mean, for me, I mean, it, it caught fish today, but y'all, I mean, I've really, the, any of the reds, the red bug plum, plum apple, I mean, they they all do a pretty good job and catch fish. I know once it gets real hot, that water temps get in the high 80s to low 90s as it was today. I know some guys, and I like to hear y'all's thoughts, uh, some guys will throw red bug in cloudy or, you know, I say cloudy, kind of cloudy conditions with the sun, and some guys will throw it, you know, in all sun. I've heard two different, you know, reasons to why they throw plum apple or red bug. I'd like to hear y'all's thoughts with it. Thank y'all for watching this Catch 15 Challenge presented by the Deep Dive app. Really quick, if you're struggling to find productive areas on your lake or are new to fishing and want to get pointed in the right direction about where to start fishing, head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and go to our Lake Breakdowns page. Here you'll find lake breakdowns from myself, Randy Blockett, and Matt Steffen. I focus on offshore breakdowns, Matt covers smallmouth, and Randy covers shallow water largemouth. These lake breakdowns provide 40 GPS waypoints that you can transfer straight to your fish finder. We give detailed area descriptions, the best conditions to fish each area, low recommendations, and key strategies for the lake in general. We also give you guide on how to transfer the waypoints straight to your fish finder so you don't have to worry about the technology gap there.
You can scroll through and find breakdowns for all four seasons of the year. And we have a lot of lakes here, so you, you probably will find most of the major lakes in this list already. However, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and don't see your lake in one of the four seasons, you can also get a personal lake breakdown from either Randy or Matt at the bottom of the page, and you can pick any lake in the country and get 40 waypoints picked out personally by Matt or Randy. Check out our lake breakdowns at fishthemoment.com.